Hey designers, it's me Jan and in this video you will learn about skeleton loading, why we use this type of loading in UI design and how to create an animated skeleton loading in Figma. Let's go! First of all, we should define what skeleton loading or skeleton screen is. Skeleton loading is a type of interaction that occurs when the screen's content is not fully displayed because the interface is waiting to download all the content. The skeleton screen is composed of bones representing placeholders uh, of the content that is actually displayed on the screen after the loading is finished. Those placeholders are usually grey or neutral tone filled shapes. For the best results, designers and developers make those skeleton loaders animated with a pulsing effect to provide proper feedback to users on the system's current status. Of course, there are different ways how to express loading. We can talk, for example, about loading spinners, which takes place in some cases as well. But if we look at the trends uh, nowadays, pulsing skeleton loaders or screens are the number one solution. The advantages are not only better visual appeal of the design, but also the perceived duration of waiting from the user's perspective. Easily users think that they are waiting not that long, even the waiting duration for seeing the content is the same for uh, most of the loaders. As you can see, skeleton loading is used by most of the famous brands and digital products nowadays. We can see platforms including YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn and many more. And now let's move on to the practical part of this video where we will smart animate pulsing loading in Figma. For that I have prepared this screen of a marketplace mobile app. We will try to develop a skeleton screen for this particular design and show its own loading interaction. First of all we should create the, um, the interactive component. Uh, we start with the frame which is 320 pixels wide and 32 high. Of course we should add the fill. This fill should be slightly lighter than the, um, than the background of the actual screen. I think something like this should work. I'll try. Yeah, this should work. Uh, we can make it a little bit rounded and we can call it bone. As we learned, those uh, placeholders are called bones. Okay, now we can create a rectangle. Yeah, so 160 pixels wide and 320 pixels high. This should work well. Again, we will uh, make this slightly lighter. And we will create a linear gradient. This linear gradient should be uh, in the opposite, uh, opposite direction. So yeah, something like this should work and it should be composed of three points. So let's add one point uh, in the middle. This should be 100% uh, um, opacity and the bo uh, on the border lines it should be just with the zero opacity. Then we can uh, pu um, put the rectangle inside. Uh, as we can see uh, it, it can be slightly lighter. Yeah, something like this should work. And now we can we can hide it uh, from the from the frame. Still, it's inside. Still, it's it's inside the bone. But we will hide it like this, uh, 80 pixels, uh, till the start of the frame. Now we can choose the frame, create the master component here, and we will create um, we will create a variant for this. Uh, to make the component interactive. So let's add the variant and now we can choose uh, the rectangle and we can uh, move it to the opposite side of the frame. Uh, the, 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 the position of the rectangle is the same just on the opposite side. So again 80 pixels. And now we can switch to the prototype mode. So let's choose the first one, switch to prototype and uh, at the interaction, this interaction should be after delay. 
I think 300 milliseconds should work and it should be smart animation with the linear linear um, animation and uh, 1000 milliseconds and the second interaction should be uh, also after delay but just one millisecond and this should be instant because we don't want to make the posing effect like backward yeah and I think it should work like this uh, also check the constraints here it should be left and top but uh, for the second one it sh would be better to keep this on the right because uh, when you will resize uh, to fit the actual proportions of the um, of the elements inside the app it should be better for you okay and now we can uh, we can copy the uh, the proportions of each element with this kind of um, component which is now here in the assets yeah so you can you can resize it to fit uh, the actual actual content inside <laughs> When the skeleton screen is ready, you can just switch to prototype and uh, add the interaction uh, showing the loading of the screen and we can also use after delay interaction. We can set there, for example, 5000 milliseconds and uh, it should be instant. And now we can run the prototype and see the interaction. <laughs> 